Welcome to the Tennessee Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. In about a week, you'll be able to find this presentation at the same website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Lenore Rhine University. Give me a Thank you very much. So my name is Sarah Holler. I'm an enrollment counselor here at Lenore Rhine. I work with mostly with our Western North Carolina students, South Carolina and Tennessee students. So if you have any questions, I'm your person for all things Lenore Rhine. We are located in Hickory, North Carolina. So we're not too far in from the state line. We're about an hour from Asheville. So on the other side of that. Let me get my things moving. So a couple of things to just know about our community and our campus life. We are a smaller university. We are a private university. Um, what that means is that's just how we're funded. But with that, with private school, we do not have an in-state or out-of-state tuition. So all of our students have the same total cost and tuition that they look at every year. As I mentioned, we are smaller. Our total number with our undergraduate and our graduate school is around 2,700. So I tell students they always meet a new face every day, but you always see some familiar faces and your friends on campus when you're walking. Our class sizes, the average is about 17. For me personally, I went to Lenoride and when I was here, graduated in 17, as I mentioned. Um, my big class was about 25 to 30 students. So you really start kind of quote big and even work smaller. Um, once you get into ma your major, it's a lot of even smaller classes, maybe even under 10 people, and you really get to build those relationships with your professors and get to know your classmates as well with that process. Even though we're smaller, we are very well represented. We have around 40 estates, maybe a little more right now, represented on our campus along with about 30 to 31 countries. So even though we are the smaller, we still kind of range pretty wide. We also have about 23 athletic teams on campus. We are a division two school and we compete in the South Atlantic Conference. With that, there's never a dull moment. Usually we're always having an athletic event on campus. We also have about 60 plus clubs and organizations on our campus. And that's constantly growing because students have the ability to continually add new programs. Another thing I always highlight with students is our Hickory community. Our local community, almost any place, restaurant, store you go into, there's some LR signs, gear, or different discounts for our students. So you see the support and you also are always meeting a alumni, even recent or even a few years back, who after they've graduated, they've decided to settle here in the Hickory and Lenora area, their home. So a couple other specifics and details with our process and your application. Your first step will be to submit your application. If you have not already with us, we are test optional this year. And so with that, if you have test scores, I encourage you to send those to us. However, those are not a required component this year. Additionally, as always, essays, resumes, and recommendations are not required. They're just optional components as well. I've included on this slide a fee waiver down towards the bottom left, that's LR Bear 21. If you are submitting your application, be sure to use that at the end when you're doing your electronic signature and that will waive your fee. That code is good anytime that you submit a Lenore application for us this year. We do have two upcoming deadlines I wanna quickly point out. One is actually tomorrow. Um, and I know that sounds kind of intimidating, but you definitely would still be able to fall into that as long as you submit your application and send us your high school transcript tomorrow you would fall into that. If not, you do by the November 13th and you fall under that second one. So what these both deadlines are, it's just a quicker way we're able to give you a decision on our end. If we have everything complete by either of these dates, our students receive a decision from us by the end of that respective month. 
to make a complete application for us. It is just your application form as well as the high school transcript. And with that, your high schools can reach out. Your counselors are welcome to send that to me through email or through fax or any way they feel most comfortable. I've included my contact information on the bottom of this slide as well. As I mentioned, I work with our Tennessee students, so feel free to reach out at any time if you have any questions about Lenorine, what we have to offer, or even just the application process. If you get in it, start having questions, feel free to reach out. Or if you want to look into even a certain program that we have even more, I'm happy to help get you connected with our faculty. They love talking with our incoming students and they work with the field more than I do. So thank you for listening today. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Faulkner University. Sorry about that, technical difficulty. Uh, my name is Philip Randolph. I am the uh, representative for the state of Tennessee for Faulkner University. Uh, welcome tonight. I uh, appreciate you giving me some time to talk about Faulkner. Um, Faulkner University was founded in 1942 as Montgomery Bible School. Um, and uh, we became a four-year institution in 1985, uh, which means we're a relatively new school compared to most institutions. Uh, but we do have a Christian background, and we're a Christian university, a Christian heritage. Uh, that means that uh, no matter what you study here at Faulkner, um, the, the professors will teach uh, history, legal studies, English, um, physical therapy, whatever you study will be from a Christian worldview, from a biblical perspective, and we're proud of that. Faulkner University is located in um, Montgomery, Alabama. There we go. Uh, Montgomery is the capital city of Alabama. We're located in the south central part of the state. Uh, we are about four and a half to five hours from any uh, city or town in Middle Tennessee. Um, we are about a two hour drive from the Appalachian Trail in uh, northern Alabama, about a three hour drive from Gulf Shores Beach and about three and a half hours drive from uh, the beaches in Florida. We are about a 30 minute drive uh, from both Lake Martin and Lake Jordan, and we're about a two and a half hour drive from Atlanta. Uh, Fort University is a relatively small uh, university. We have 3,500 students, including our satellite campuses, which are in uh, Mobile, Birmingham, and Huntsville. We have 2,100 undergraduate students and 750 graduate students. We have about 800 to 900 students living on campus, and these students represent about 40 states and 38 countries. Uh, we are small, but we feel like this is an advantage to us. We have a 15 to one uh, student teacher ratio. Um, and you get to know the professors who are teaching your class. It's nothing to see them at a ball game or eating lunch. Uh, so you have that uh, personal um, connection with your professors. We have about 45 undergraduate degrees and these are concentrated into 30 majors and about 12 broad fields of study. Uh, we have four degree programs with 100% job placement after graduation. These are criminal justice, computer science, counseling and education. We're very proud of our new health sciences uh, facility. Uh, we have a really strong health sciences program at Faulkner and looking to, to get a lot better. We've got uh, two master's programs, one in speech and language pathology, and the second is physician's assistant. Uh, in 2021, we will begin um, our doctoral degree program in physical therapy, and in 22, we will begin a doctoral program in occupational therapy. 
Uh, we have a clinic, an autism clinic, which is run by our students. Um, and uh, it is free to the public for Montgomery for uh, those with autism. We also have a law school, the Jones School of Law, uh, which at times has had a 98% uh, bar pass rate. Uh, in Fartner, we um, compete in the NAIA. Um, in men's sports, we have baseball, basketball, football, golf, and soccer. Women's sports, basketball, golf, soccer, softball, and volleyball. And in non-championship sports, we have uh, bass fishing and cheerleading. Uh, social life at Faulkner revolves around our social clubs. We have four men's and four women's social clubs, uh, which compete in sports and other activities um, for uh, the best club at the end of the year. Um, and intramurals as well, uh, where you can get up a team yourself um, and compete. As far as uh, scholarships and awards, um, we are not, we're test optional as of today. So we, we're not requiring the minimum score of 18, but uh, with a score of 18 or 19, there's a 6,000 per year scholarship, um, which uh, 20 to 22 and 8,000 per year scholarship. 23 to 26, 9,000 um, dollar scollarship, uh, 27 to 29, 10,000, and our Founders Award, which is uh, if you score 30 or higher, um, 12,000 per year and possibly more. So um, just uh, this is uh, my contact information. Uh, would love to hear from you. If you'd like to find out more about Faulkner, um, go ahead and uh, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Hendricks College. And don't forget to send in your Q&A questions. Awesome. Hi, my name is Elon Epps, and I am the Hendricks rep from, I'm the Hendricks rep for Tennessee, my bad there. And so I'll just screen share with y'all. And so I'll start my presentation. I love to start my presentations without a two minute video. So if you'll just bear with me as I start that. Awesome. So I love the way that that ends. It kind of asks you a question, you know, you in, and so you probably are wondering, well, what am I in for? So I just made the decision to work for Hendrix. And so I made that decision for a few reasons. One is because I really think Hendrix has taken education and kind of flipped it on its head. We asked our students to do more than just write an essay, perform well on a test, or engage in a classroom. We ask you to take your passions to the next level, whether that is a passion for science, art, or a sport. Um, so what that kind of looks like is we have a program called the Odyssey program. And so across um, your time here at Hendrix, you'll kind of have three different Odyssey credits across six different themes. So it's artistic creativity, professional leadership development, global awareness, service to the world, undergraduate research, and special projects. And so every single student's odyssey is going to look different because everyone's journey is going to look different. So for artistic creativity, that could be as simple as doing an art class, professional leadership development, that could be playing one of our varsity athletic sports for two semesters, and we do have 21 varsity athletic sports, um, or that could be an internship during the year or during the summer. 
or undergraduate research, you might have your own research project or jump onto a professor's research project. For global awareness, you might decide, you know, I want to study abroad and that could be study a language further and actually do a research project abroad um, or a whole host of other things. And what's really cool about that is Odyssey actually has its own office here on our campus. So since 2005, when it was funded, it's given over $4 million in funding to students to study abroad, do research opportunities or any sort of project they want to do through Odyssey. So Odyssey will not cost you extra money when you come to Hendrix to kind of fulfill any of those requirements, which is really cool. Another program I really love is our Murphy Scholars. So if you have a passion for language and literature, this would really be that program for you. So second semester of freshman year, you would apply, um, you'd be writing an additional essay, um, and you would be applying to be a Murphy Scholar. And so what that would be is kind of getting an additional $4,000 to rather be an internship, a study abroad opportunity, different things like that. Also take an Oxford style class, being in a cohort of students. And within that, you'd have access to kind of um, poets and authors when they come to campus, as well as when Murphy kind of finds out about job opportunities or internships, our Murphy scholars are those first people they turn to. And when you're a Murphy scholar, you also graduate with honors. It's another thing. And that third thing, and I think this is also kind of something different, is our career services. You have access to our career services from day one. You don't have to wait till junior or year to kind of ask for help, but from day one, you can go and ask for help with your major, picking um, a job or an internship during the summer, they're always willing to help. And one way they do that is second semester, or sophomore year, you'll come back three days early, something called career term. Essentially a boot camp, working on etiquette skills, resume writing, interviewing, um, and also working on your brand. What is your brand? What does that mean? And how will that help you moving forward? A lot of our alumni come back and actually work on workshops for our students, as well as those are the ones who actually do those mock interviews and tell you how to prepare for the future. Um, so those are kind of really three programs that I really love that Hendrix has that kind of propel our students forward. So it's kind of holistically, we are a smaller school um, and different things like that as well. So that's kind of all that I really want to tell you tonight about Hendrix, but I do ask you to kind of reach out to me if anything I said kind of piqued your interest. Um, do reach out to me um, or look on our website at hendrix.edu backslash visit um, and all of my contact information is right there. Again, my name is Elon Amps from Hendrix University. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from the University of Mississippi Ole Miss. Hi everyone, I'm Carmen Morris. I am the Nashville recruiter for the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss. Um, I also have my colleague, Ms. Neil Ann Chambly. She's actually the Memphis-based um, Tennessee recruiter for Ole Miss, and we're super excited to be with you all. Neil Ann is actually gonna be handling the chat box, so if y'all have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat box. And also, I do recruit for the Middle and East Tennessee area. All right, so we're just going to dig deep into some Ole Miss things. So one thing that I love about Ole Miss is that we were founded in 1848, so that we are the flagship university in the state of Mississippi, simply meaning that we were the first public university here in Mississippi. Um, we represent about 17,000 undergraduates from all across the world, starting with representing um, all 82 counties in the state of Mississippi, all 50 states, as well as 90 countries in the world globally. So that's something that we pride ourselves in, being able to show how diversify our students, where they're coming from. With that being said, we have our student faculty ratio, which is also I like to pride ourselves. I like to say that we pride ourselves in that because it is 17 to 1, which we do have 45 students in a classroom, which I like to say that that's something that we offer, which is super cool, just because all of our students have that opportunity to not only have that personalized private school field, just because we are in the SEC. So out of all 14 SEC schools, we are the third smallest school in the SEC. So you get that private school field with the amenities and resources of a large institution. And you all will see right here, we do offer 300 student organizations. So you can see that all of our students, they get involved, whether it's academically, professionally, or socially, you have a way to get involved on campus. And our students are doing wonderful things here in the state of Mississippi. 
In case you all didn't know, we are actually located in a small town called Oxford, Mississippi. We're northern part of Mississippi, so we're actually about four hours from Nashville. So it's within driving distance. You don't have to go all across the world. You will get that opportunity to come down and visit us. But one thing that I love about Oxford is we're steep in tradition. So you get traditions, um, you get delicious food and awesome experiences. It's a super cool place to come and visit um, with our population being 24,000 pop students, I'm sorry, 24,000 people in the city of Oxford that typically doubles when our students are on campus. So not only are you around this city, but you also get those traditions and you're able to see so many great things here in the city of Oxford. Um, I'm going to dig a little into, oh, and I forgot to add, I'm so sorry. Uh, we're known as one of the best, nation's best college towns. So it's really one of those places you have to come see, not only for the traditions and the delicious food, but it's a really cool place to visit because you'll see the attractions, you'll see the experiences and everything that we offer in this city. So digging right into our scholarships. Um, so we do offer two types of scholarships. We offer our ACT merit-based scholarships, which is based on your ACT and SAT and the GPA. So as long as you meet those requirements, we will offer that automatic merit-based scholarship. Um, but we also do also offer competitive scholarships, which is actually our special programs and scholarship application, which is accessible to you after you apply. So you have access to that once you complete an application. Now, being that it's competitive, you do have to put in a resume as well as an essay. Um, that deadline is January 5th. So once you complete that, that is the next step that you have completed and you have that. If you enjoyed everything that you've heard, or even if you hear a lot of things about Ole Miss and you just want to come and apply, one thing that I do recommend, we do have two ways you can apply. You can apply through our institutional app, which is olemiss.edu forward slash apply, or you can go through the common app and apply. One thing about our institutional app is not only is it user friendly, but no essay is required for the application. And once you apply online, um, all you would need to send in is either your ACT or SAT scores, um, as well as your high school transcript. At this time, we do know COVID, a lot of students aren't able to test. So we are admitting students without a test score, um, as long as you make, meet our GPA 2.0 core subject requirement. After we've received all of that information, we can make a decision. And let me just make sure I got that. All right. And so with that, I do highly encourage all students to apply because there is a $60 application fee. But the great thing about this weekend is it's actually our free app weekend, October 16th through the 18th which that does mean that tomorrow we do begin. Um, we're super excited. So if y'all are super interested, please go ahead and apply. You don't have to pay that app fee waiver and we will go ahead and review your application. Again, that is October 16th through the 18th. So it does end on Sunday. We highly encourage you to apply. And if you would love to come visit us here in the city of Oxford, we would love to have you. You would just go on our visit days, olemiss.edu forward slash visit, and you would go and apply. Um, I am Carmen Morris. This is my contact information, and we would love to have you visit. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Concord University. Oh, my God. Hi everybody, good to see you all tonight. Give me just one second while I screen share here. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Maisie Landreth. I am the admissions rep uh, for Tennessee from Concord University. And as we get started here, All right, so we are a public liberal arts university. We are located in the state of West Virginia. Uh, we were founded in 1872. We have over 60 undergraduate majors, minors, and programs of study. We have a total of four graduate graduate degree programs. We are working on a couple more, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, like I said, we are located in West Virginia. We have two campuses. Uh, we have our main campus in Athens, West Virginia, and our uh, commuter campus at the Irma Bird Center in Beckley, West Virginia. 
a cool fact about us uh, and just something that we're really proud of is we offer over $21 million in financial aid each year to our students, uh, whether that be undergraduate or graduate. All right, so just some information about applying to Concord. Uh, the best place to visit is concord.edu slash apply. Uh, for our freshmen, uh, we do require you to have at least a 2.0 GPA. Uh, we are offering test optional scholarships and admission this year. We know that it's been a hard time, so we wanna make sure that we are getting you guys in to start your career and your success here at Concord. A little bit about our programs and our faculty. Uh, some of our top programs just to list are education, biology, and business. We have over 110 full-time faculty here on the campus. Over 73% of them uh, have the highest degree in their discipline. We do have a smaller average class size with our ratio being 15 to one, and all classes are taught by professors, which means that we don't have any teacher's assistants or any things of that sort, sort uh, that would teach a class to you. They are all professors, so they all have uh, that degree and the, the research and the time to be able to teach you that criteria. Uh, one of the coolest parts about our uh, academics and our faculty is that you are paired with one of your uh, your professors to be advised. So you'll be advised uh, at least once a semester, but you do have the opportunity uh, to be advised uh, more than that. Uh, but they will work with you on what classes to take and things of that nature as well. A little bit about our performing arts. Uh, so we have things like theater, music band, choir, television, and a radio station on campus. Uh, and there are some scholarships um, that go along with those. Uh, so definitely, if that's something that you are interested in, make sure to sign up for those. You can participate in those, even if you are not a performing arts major. A little bit about student activities and community service. It is a really fun campus. We have tons and tons of opportunities for students. Uh, things like our Bonner program, which is a service organization. We're actually the only public institution in the nation that offers the Bonner program. Again, television and radio theater, all of the arts that you uh, could find interest in. We do have Greek life on campus. We do have faith-based groups, political-based groups. Anything that you can imagine, we probably have it. And if we don't, it's a good opportunity and a good campus for you to kind of start your own club. Um, and I'm sure that somebody else has the same interest. So. Uh, if you love to be around the outdoors, Concord is the perfect place for you. We have tons of opportunities for all four seasons. Not only do we have tons of hiking opportunities for you, but we have whitewater rafting, kayaking that's close. We even have skiing and snowboarding, and I use this as an opportunity. My coworker, Amy Walker, is on uh, this chat as well tonight, and uh, she is actually a skiing instructor. So if you guys are interested in that, we know a good hookup for you for sure. Athletics. We are Division II athletic. Uh, we are in the Mountain East Conference. We do have uh, men's and women's sports. I'll let you guys check them out here. We also have eSports. Uh, we are the first school in West Virginia to fully get that eSports program up and running. We were second in the nation last year in Call of Duty, and we take a lot of pride in that. So if you're interested in that, make sure to let us know, and we will get you hooked up with our coach. Residence life on campus, we do offer uh, for students to live on campus. Uh, we have a ton, a ton of stuff for you guys to do while you live here. That's one of the best parts about being on the Concord campus. Again, there are tons of things for you to do, even uh, that doesn't include events. We have uh, rentals for you in the dorms, as well as uh, tons of opportunities for you to mingle and events that are happening um, and held by your RAs as well um, on campus. If you all are like me in any way, shape, or form, you like to eat, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We do have a cafeteria on campus. We have our uh, Starbucks Cafe, Subway, and Wingspan. You come, it comes with three options for you to choose, uh, and if you guys have questions about that, feel free to use that Q&A there. Uh, this is Mark Stella in this picture. This is just talking about our public safety and how safe of a campus we are. That's something that uh, we take a lot of pride in as well. We are on the outskirts of Mercer County, which is definitely a big plus, um, but they are not your Paul Blart mall cop. They are all certified through the West Virginia State Police uh, and they, they do a great job of making it a safe and fun campus. 
scholarships. Let's talk about money. So we are offering test optional scholarships, like I said. Uh, so of course, if you have tested, make sure to get those scores into us because that can increase your merit-based scholarship. Um, but with that $21 million worth of scholarship, we would love to be able to give that to some of you all. Make sure that if you have questions about scholarships, uh, you can reach out to us. Your con our contact information will be here in just a second. Uh, so definitely uh, keep an eye on that. Plus the Bonner Scholar Program that we talked about is a big opportunity for scholarships as well. Social media, if you guys want to screenshot this, we are on all social media platforms. And last but not least, I'm Maisie Landreth. You can screenshot my information here and I am the Tennessee Admissions Counselor. So I hope to work with you guys soon. Thanks. Thank you. Just a reminder to send in any of your Q&A questions. And lastly, we'll be hearing from the University of Colorado Boulder. All right. Hello, everyone. Excited to speak with you tonight about CU Boulder. Uh, my name is Brad, and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions at CU Boulder. I am based in Nashville, but work with all students in the southeast of the U.S. who are interested in coming to Colorado and joining us there at the foothills of the mountains. Um, just a little perspective of who we are. Um, this is a beautiful picture of our campus. Everything that you see there with a red roof is our campus. We're about 35,000 total students. About 29,000 of those are undergraduates. 58% of those students are from the state of Colorado. So that means 42% of students are joining us from all over the country and all over the world coming to call Boulder home. Um, even though we are a large campus, uh, you do have a great student to faculty ratio to create those relationships with your faculty in your major to visit them in office hours, establish those opportunities for research internships and whatever it may be, and also a lot of opportunities to engage with your fellow students and really get involved on campus in a variety of ways. Really excited about what our students do in the classroom and outside. It's what's given, given us a recognition as one of the top 25 colleges for students who want to change the world. Opportunities to collaborate, again, extensive research opportunities as a tier one research institution, um, but also to give back and have that positive impact on the world outside the classroom as well. When you join our campus community, you also join the Boulder community, which is also one of the number one colleges, uh, college towns in America. Boulder actually was just also named by US News and World Report as the number one place in the US to live in just this year's report. And then you also have access to Denver, which is just about 30 miles down the road, which is number two on that US News and World Report of number of top places to live in the US. So a great community to join, not only to take advantage of outstanding academics, but also to be involved in the community at large. Inside the classroom, our students have over 100 different options for majors in seven different colleges, schools, and programs. Um, to highlight just a couple of them, our College of Engineering and our Lead School of Business is probably what we're most known for worldwide. Um, these are both top 20 programs in the US. Um, so students really get some outstanding preparation and a lot of name recognition for the experience that they have when they're going out and seeking those jobs. If you're undecided, we also have one additional program. That's our program in exploratory studies, about 25 percent of students who entered for fall of 2021 started in or fall of 2020 they actually started in the program in exploratory studies so if you're not quite sure where your major would lie or you're not quite sure of what the best path for that future career is or you have a lot of varied interests you can start in that program in exploratory studies and those academic coaches help you find your path into any of these seven colleges schools and programs that you'll graduate from like I said, not only are our students very active in the classroom, but they're active outside. Um, if you're interested in study abroad, if that opportunity again opens back up to us when the world opens up post COVID, we have over 400 different programs in 65 different countries that could take the traditional sense of a semester abroad your junior year, or potentially as early as your freshman year in a week long faculty led program. Um, our students really take the opportunity to um, uh, explore that entrepreneurial spirit that they might have. Boulder has been recognized as the number one place in America for a startup um, by Forbes magazine. So they're really supported on campus, but also in the Boulder community. There's a Google campus right in Boulder, but a lot of startups there as well. And again, our students giving back through our volunteer resource center, um, their student organizations, residence halls, all different types of opportunities there as well. And again, taking advantage of our outstanding environment. We have over 300 plus days of sunshine in the state of Colorado. It is a big draw for students to come to us where they can take advantage of hiking. Just 15 minutes from campus, you see Chautauqua Park, which takes you into all the trailheads into the mountains. Um, you also have a lot of opportunities for skiing and snowboarding. Obviously, you have access to 
Breckenridge, Vail, Aspen, just a few hours from campus. But also if you want those quick, quick runs, either in the morning or afternoons, even on the weekdays, you have Eldora, which is just 40 minutes from campus. And you see there um, in the heart of our campus as well, our football stadium, we are division one, we compete in the Pac-12 conference. So great opportunities to um, really have that school spirit surrounding big time sports on a big time stage. So if all those things start to entice you and you really want to potentially join us, that application process, these are all the things that are required to apply to CU Boulder. Uh, we are on the Common App and that's the way that you would apply to us. What I'll call out there for students applying for fall 2021, we are test optional like many of the schools across the country. Again, giving that uh, benefit of the doubt for students because of COVID and that impediment to testing. So really, if you haven't had the opportunity to test or you don't want to provide that, certainly you can take advantage of that test optional. And for our automatic consideration scholarships, we also won't be looking at test scores at all. So you won't be hurt and being reviewed for some of those scholarships as well. Just a couple deadlines here. No real difference between our early action and regular decision deadline, except for when you hear back from us. So both are non-binding, so you're not committed to us until you decide to join us on campus. But if you meet that early action deadline of November 15th, you hear back on or before February 1st. If you meet that regular decision deadline, you'll hear back on or before April 1st. So really encourage students um, to apply. You have a month yet till that early action deadline hits, so get those apps in um, and get that decision much earlier. Other opportunities to learn about us, if you visit colorado.edu backslash visit, you'll see all of our virtual opportunities to engage with us, sample lectures, one-on-one -on -one opportunities to speak with myself or with our current students, student panels, virtual tours, interactive virtual tours, and many more things that we continue to roll out in lieu of actually being able to welcome visitors to campus at this time. And this last thing here is just my contact information. Like I said, I work with all students in the Southeast. So if you have questions about CU Boulder or the application process, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so we do have a few extra minutes. So I'd like to invite all of our reps to come back on. And if you have any Q&A questions, you can submit them now. And I'll just ask everyone uh, to answer a round of Q&A for me um if everybody could just share their favorite event that takes place on their campus uh and we'll just go in the same order that we went in previously uh, so you guys can go ahead so what well, two of mine i would go kind of tied almost tied on my end so the first one is just any of our athletic events um we're known to have the loudest and only traveling student section in Division Two. So our Bear Nation is just a different atmosphere. And it's just really exciting to be a part of even as a former student and just even you know as an alumni at the games, just watching the students. It's a great experience. And then event wise though, another event on our campus is our final flip and that we do right before every exams in the fall and spring. And we just do chicken and waffles and there's usually karaoke, bingo, just different activities for students just to kind of relax and release a little bit of stress and kind of take a break from staring at their books or computers every time. Well, at uh, Faulkner, we have an event uh, in the spring uh, we call Jamboree. It is a musical production uh, at the end of the semester in April. And uh, it's basically a competition between uh, the uh, four social clubs, brother and sister clubs, and uh, they come up uh, with a theme um, and build a show, uh, choreography and uh, singing and um, a show around uh, that theme. And uh, we invite the public and prospective students, um, youth groups and things like that uh, to enjoy the show. Um, and at the end, of course, there's uh, a decision to be made about who who won and which basically usually uh, the decision wins the whole year as far as the social clubs go. So it's a, it's a big event, uh, something that everybody looks forward to in the spring. Awesome. Mine would be, it's called Shirt Tales. And so it happens every single year um, at the end of our welcome week. And it goes all the way back to 1917. And it's kind of funny. Um, because Ole Miss is in the call. Um, so when um, Hendricks originally had a football team, we beat Ole Miss. Um, and so then the students paraded our downtown and it was like a pajama parade. 
and um, they it's called shirt tails because they wear like shirt tails, um, like the like a man's shirt. And um, so all the different residential halls will um, like compete against each other, and it's really fun um, in our brick pit to watch that happen at the end of our welcome week every year. All right, so I'm not going to talk about the Grove because if you know Ole Miss, you already know we probably talk about that all the time. But one cool thing that I love about Ole Miss, we have the Double Decker Art Festival. It's we're actually celebrating 25 years in the spring. Um, if you love art, you love music, you love everything that comes with it, you definitely want to come down. We have our Double Decker buses that are originated from England. So you get to see that 60,000 people in the city and literally 100 booths, food trucks. It's an awesome time to come visit us for sure. I think for Concord, um, I always mention homecoming, um, but as a student, my favorite was blacklight bingo, which is basically what they call it's bingo and black lights. Um, but we go all out for getting uh, prizes like flat screen TVs, new laptops, just all kinds of great prizes um, for students. And um, we often tease in admissions if we can kind of like join in again, but they won't let us. But um, I like that one, especially with um, our homecoming week as well. It's really great to see all the students get together with alums. All right, and at CU, definitely one of those things that every student has to take advantage of, whether you're into sports or not, is to attend at least one Hope football game, uh, because at the beginning of each game and at halftime, uh, we have the running of Ralphie. Ralphie is our live American Buffalo mascot, so it's pretty impressive to see this large, massive animal run a loop around our football field. Um, and she is partnered with our Ralphie runners. Um, and they are students who try out when they come to the universities to be Ralphie runners, they take care of her. And at the university, they're actually considered varsity athletes, not through the NCAA, but through CU Boulder, they are considered varsity athletes. So definitely something that is to a sight to behold um, and something that all of our students and alumni are pretty proud of. Wow. <laughs> Well, thank you all for sharing and uh, thank you everyone for joining us. When you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to check out the full sign up for additional sessions. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings online at the same website where you registered. So thank you all and uh, good night. Bye everyone.